Welcome listeners. Today is such a treat. I have Michelle Kenny from Peace and Parenting. Michelle was on a long time ago when I first started this. We connected and here's the deal. Whether you are going through a divorce or not, if you are a parent, this is going to be a really good episode to listen to because Michelle, you have had, I don't know if you know this, but a huge impact on my life. I actually you know, I hired Michelle to help me and everybody knows I'm a grandma, but I've got one tagging along behind who's a senior. And I'm so glad that I talked to you, Michelle, because, and I know we're going to talk a little bit more about connecting with our kids. I think that I spent so much of my time being so concerned and worried about, is she going to turn out okay? And I've got to teach her all these lessons that I wasn't doing the connecting and it's her senior year and we're connecting. Woo! Yay! Hallelujah! You're doing it. You're doing it. I know. I know. So so excited to have you here. So Thank I you. to start, I want to get your background on what made you go into this field, and then I do want to help my parents who are going through a divorce. They're always asking me when should I, I tell my kids? How should I tell them? So I want to get into that a little bit later yeah. on, but yeah. welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Thank please. you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad I'm here again. And it was so Aww. lovely connecting with you on a professional level and helping you with your daughter. That was lovely too. Yeah. So it was thank wonderful. You for Very letting helpful. me in. Um, I'm Michelle and I'm a mother of two and I'm also divorced and, um, I was a teacher and high school counselor and I loved kids and I always wanted to be around kids. And I thought kids were my calling and I wasn't a really good teacher and my students all really loved me. And so I thought I would be a natural parent and I came into parenting and I was not good. <laughs> I was a yeller. <laughs> I was a control freak. I was a perfectionist and I wanted to run my household like my classroom. And it didn't work because I wasn't putting any connection pieces together. And so my strong-willed and lovely oldest daughter Esme really put me through it because she was like, "No, I'm not I'm not going to be punished. I'm not going to be rewarded. I don't care." <laughs> and I'll just, you know, keep acting out. And so at some point, I think she was about five and a half she really was like being so unkind to her sister. She tried to drown her sister in the w swimming pool. I had to dive in and rescue them. And I thought to myself, something has to change. This child is not a demon child, but she's acting in these ways that are unbelievable. And so I have to do something. So I found connective parenting. I hired a coach. My ex-husband and I went through 12 weeks of training together. And I cried for the first six weeks because I just... In my mind, I had it all wrong. And when I found connection, she totally changed because I changed. And so we found our way together. And it wasn't um, until I changed how I parented and really dove into the idea of no punishments and no rewards and no threats and no bribes and no yelling and really got into the idea of connection that she she didn't change until then. Yeah. And I, I mean, I can say I am living proof. And Michelle, it was so hard for me because of the same type of person as you. And um, I have adult kids. It seemed to kind of work with them. You know what I mean? And yeah. just wanted to do everything so correct. And then when they aren't willing to, they don't want to follow your rules, which my youngest so love, you know, yeah. it, but how much I have learned from yeah. that youngest child. Oh, life changing to, to be able to connect. And now like the relationship, I know like moving forward, it's going to be good forever. Yeah. And I don't know if it would have been so truly, yeah. truly so important. And anyone who is having issues, I would highly recommend booking some time. I mean, I just spent an hour with you and it was life changing. Yeah, it really does. I think it just changes our thought process because we grew up a certain way, you know, you punish and you reward yeah. and they'll turn out okay. And you know, you get through it. And some of these kids aren't going to have that. And I'd have to say too, like, there's a lot of compliant kids who are just stuffing it, who might go along with what you're doing and saying, but who knows, are they going to end up people pleasers? Are they going to not understand themselves? Well, like connections, the way to go, if you can, if you want to change, you know, the way right. to parenting. And and I want to say, Michelle, it's never too late because I have no. these beautiful adult kids too and grandbabies. And 
just by me sharing with them what I've learned, because it's so funny to watch them watch me parent and they're like, what? the hell is wrong with you, mom? You can't let her get away with, you know, this or is whatever. not the mom we knew, <laughs> <laughs> but just to be able to talk through it with them is going to help them be better parents. They can yeah. learn from it. So truly it helps kids of all ages. Yeah, it really does. It really, really does. And it's such rewarding work. So I, became a certified coach through hand in hand parenting. And then I begged people to take free classes out of my living room. And I told all my friends they had to take my classes because I needed to have my tribe. And so yes. I made, I recruited them all to take my classes and I begged people to come. And then finally, I just, you know, I have my own podcast and courses and Finally, after and years are, and years of work, it's working. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're all over social media. I would follow you there too. It, it's aw- you. how long have you been doing this now, Michelle? I've been doing my Instagram since 2017, posting every single day, twice a day, usually three times a day, sometimes um, since then. So, did you start doing this connective parenting, kind of parenting coaching? after you were divorced or during your marriage? I started the actual parenting this way while I was married. And my husband and I at the time took the class, the initial class together. Okay. Yeah. Um, You said that. And then I just, since then, I just kept parenting that way. And just my business started like a year or two afterwards. And then probably two or three years later, I got divorced. Okay. All right. So now you were already connected then when it came, when you came upon your divorce. So some of, some of my listeners probably aren't. Yeah. Which is okay too. It's a great time to make that connection because your kids are definitely needing it. Then they're really needing a secure relationship with one or more parents. And so that's a perfect time to start. And so when you talk about connecting, maybe give an example for a parent, they're slapped in the face, they're going to be going through a divorce. They've kind of run the show like I did, like follow the rules, do this and that. And now they're a little bit lost. What can they start doing to make build that connection? I know it's different for different ages. And I'd like to talk about every age. (laughs) Yeah, it is different for every age. I think the idea of connection is that we prioritize the relationship we share with our kids over everything else. So if you think of it as the way in which you would want to be in a friendship or in a good relationship, a romantic relationship, Mm -hmm. if you would, if you think about what things do you want from a partner, right? You're going through a divorce, so you can actually really tangibly understand this because you know what you didn't want, right? So what do you want? You want somebody who's empathic. You want somebody to be in your corner no matter what. You want somebody to spend time with you, and you don't want somebody to, you you know, chastise you when you do something wrong. You want to come at it collaboratively to try to get to a better place. So I think that's the way we look at connection on a practical level. For really little kids and for maybe up to school age kids, we talk about the idea of special time, like really like spending one-on-one time with our child every single day doing exactly what they want to do. We time it and we announce it and it's kid-driven and it really builds in deep connection. And if you're going through a divorce, I think this is a beautiful thing to start during that divorce because what a great way to you know, funnel yourself through this divorce is through this idea of connecting one-on-one with your kid every single day. Can I ask, you said you, you put a time on it. How much time do you generally put on that? I like to say 20 minutes. I think in my mind that's ideal, but if you have four kids, 20 minutes might not be what you can do, you know, like maybe it's 10 or 15, but 20 minutes with each kid one-on-one I think is ideal. And people will say, well, I don't have time. I'm a working mom and this and that, but it will create more cooperation. It will create more um, harmony between siblings. It just, there's a lot of good byproducts to cre- to having that one-on-one time that will give mm-hmm. you more time in the long run. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you said you do that when they're little, you kind of set up the special time. I just know from my experience, I've kind of changed where when she walks in the room, 
and she says something, I drop everything and I listen. Where before I think I kept doing my chores or doing my work. And if she says, hey, you want to sit down and itch my back and watch something? I do it. Yeah. I don't think I was doing that before. I was like, well, just give me a little time. Like, so I'm trying to be more bending to her when she's needing it. I don't know what you recommend um, for people in general with older kiddos. Yeah. So you're exactly right. And I love how you said I'm bending for her because she knows that, right? She understands that on a deep level because she's an older kid. So she gets it. So if you bend for them, they're more likely to bend for you later mm -hmm. on when you ask them to do something or when you need a help or they're more likely to do something for you if you're doing this for them. And I think you've got it down perfectly. When the teenager comes and says, <laughs> do you want to hang out with me? You say yes, absolutely. 100%. When Esme was like, are you going to hang out? She's like to say this. Do you want to watch me eat? This is what she wants me to do is watch her eat. And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I want to watch you. I mean, I was in the middle of so much last night. And she's like, are you going to watch me? I was like, yep, I'm coming right now to watch you. <laughs> you know, like you take advantage of those moments with these adolescent kids because they don't happen often. And right. they're not going to schedule special time with you because they have a million things going on. And so when they ask for you, go. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's such a simple lesson, but kind of hard to do when you're in the groove mm -hmm. of doing it a different way. So, so I love that. So people can, can just start connecting. Now, what about for all those parents who are asking me, um, well, when do we let them know? Well, yeah. how do we let them know that we're going to get divorced? And yeah, I mean, I think you don't want to let them know until, obviously, until you're absolutely sure, right? Because I think we go through this whole stage. Am I going to go? Am I going to stay? Mm -hmm. You know, when and how are we going to do it? If you tell them well before you separate and then you're still living in the same house and you've already told them, it might be too, too much information for them, especially if they're young. I would wait until – so if you have really young kids, they don't understand time very well. Right. So if, if you tell them three weeks before you move out – that you're going to move out, are they worried about it every single day? When are we leaving? What's going to happen? I would wait until it's imminent. Okay. For younger and, kids. Yeah. And even the older kids, like you don't want to give them so much time to worry about things. Right. And I think what pops into my head is, you know how like your parents, I just can remember growing up and they would say, it's fine, or they wouldn't share with you what they mm -hmm. were going through, but you could see it. That yes. not knowing is a little bit tough too. Yes, not knowing is tough too. I would say, I mean, I don't know. If you can, the, it's, the, the more quickly you can do things, the better for everybody. Yes. You know, if you draw this out and you guys are living in turmoil for a long time, that's really hard on kids because mm -hmm. they do know. But do you want to tell them so early because you don't know what you're doing yet or you don't know what your plans are and are then are they going to worry on top of feeling the turmoil? Then are right. they going to add worry to it too? Right. And I guess you could probably still be honest with them if you're struggling a little and share a little bit that your you know, father and I or mother and I are working through some things and, you know, we will keep you posted. We're, you know, just, I mean, is that, because you just think of those older kids, they just like, you can say you're okay and they know when you're not. Well, the older kids too, adolescence kids are different. I think school age kids, you want to kind of shelter them as much as you can yep. from as much as you can. The, those adolescent kids, yes, you can say mommy and daddy are having a hard time. We're trying to yep. work, work through it. All right. So different for each grade. Yeah. I'm taking notes because okay, my, good. yeah, because people always are asking about this. And then when it is time to tell them, what's a good way to let them know? What do they need to hear? They need to hear that it's not their fault. Okay. They need to hear that everyone still loves them and they need to know the logistics of what's going to happen to them. You know, you'll be here on Tuesdays. And that's why it's also important, like, until you have your custody figured out, until you right. have your schedule figured out. Like, we don't really have any business telling our kids until we know those things because those are all really big questions that they might worry about. 
We want to keep the worry away from them as much as possible. So you'll be at daddy's on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then you're going to come to mommy's on Friday. And, and they might have a lot of complaints about that or worries about that. And I think it's important not to talk the worry and the complaint away, but to say, I oh, know I'm sorry. You have to go back and forth. This is going to be really hard. And, and we understand and we're sorry we put you in this position. You know, and that's so good because I, I think too, that I spent a lot of my mommy time trying to protect my kids to keep anything bad from happening. And I didn't let them just be, yep, it's okay. It's okay that you feel sad about this. And I'm sorry that you do. And that is such a huge lesson. I mean, for me right now, sitting in this chair and for anyone who's kind of watching their kids, because, you know, truly, Michelle, it's not easy for the kids when you get divorced. And it's, you know, when their kids are going to be splitting time between parents and living in two different homes, it is a lot. It's a lot. And But at, at the same time, what the research shows is that Kids on the onset of divorce, they take an emotional hit, as they should. That would be abnormal if they didn't. But as time goes on, and if they're given the supports that they need and they have a loving family anyway, they will do just as well and be just as secure as kids from two parent families. And so you don't have to worry that you've ruined your children. Yes, They will take an emotional hit. You all will. That is okay. That makes us resilient. They will feel better and do better and be resilient if you come to them with empathy and understanding during this whole time. If you say, yes, it's hard. I know you don't want to go to daddy's today. I understand. I'm so sorry. We're right here for you. Then they can say, oh, yeah, bad stuff's going to happen to me, but I can recover and I will eventually do better because I have the support of an empathic parent. Right. And I think actually when you handle it correctly, I always tell my parent, when you handle this moment with your children, with empathy and listening to them and letting them feel it and all the things that you already said about telling them it's not their fault, it's going to be okay and how it's going to be set up. I almost think the kids grow from it and maybe become stronger than they would have been if they hadn't gone through it. I don't know. But at the very least, you're mitigating any damage that you're terrified you're going to cause your kids. Yes. They, you That damage is repairable. It 100% yeah. is repairable. And every kid, not every, but I would think most kids go through things in childhood. Oh, yes. And it's okay. It really is. We cannot protect our children from all the hurts of the world, nor do we want to. Because if we try to protect our children from all the hurts of the world, then they don't know how to recover from the hurts of the world. And when they go out there and they've never had a big hurt, it takes them down. Right. Yep. That's so, that's empowering. And that's so helpful for me to hear over and over. Um, Just a great, great lesson. So, okay. Now, Michelle, we're kind of getting towards the end of our episode already. And at the end, I have my saddle up segment where I just ask you for a little tip or a tidbit that people can do right now today um, to kind of help them to a better life. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll circle it back around to parenting because that's what I like yeah. to talk about. I'm obsessed. So I'd say if your child does something you don't like, like the little boy who hits or the sassy teenager or <laughs> somebody who's refusing to do something, instead of correcting them, instead of coming with a punishment or shame or telling them why it's wrong, can you come with complete, utter affection? Can you give the hitting kid a hug? Can you give this, tell the sassy teenager that she must need kisses from her mom? Can you just turn it into play in the moment to make the feelings easier and better and able to get through as opposed to getting stuck and correcting your child's behavior? Because do we really believe the child who hits or the sassy teenager doesn't know what they're doing is wrong or are they just in a place where they're doing the wrong thing and they need to come back online? Yeah. So 
That's so good. So Michelle, if people want to get help from you, like I did, whether they're going through a divorce or not, what's the best way to, to find you and what kind of options do they have in working with you? So you can find me at, um, peaceandparentingla.com or you can email me at michelle at peaceandparentingla.com. Um, I, you can find me on Instagram. There's lots of good information there. My podcast has great information. There's a few divorce segments in there. If you're, if that's what you're geared to, or there's lots of stuff on connected parenting. And then I offer six, eight and 10 week courses one-on-one -on -one where we meet via zoom and we really dig into connective parenting and your own personal struggles. I also have three online courses, a siblings course, an understanding big emotions course, which is tantrums, oh. and then a yelling course, which are all you do on your own. They're on demand and um, they're about an hour long and they're all video and you get to keep them forever. That's so awesome. Okay. Now I just have to ask, I didn't know about your siblings course. Oh, yeah. I mean, they all sound amazing. Can you tell me just a little bit about that? Just because I'm curious. Yeah. So siblings. So that was my kind of the reason that I went to connective parenting is because I was having my kids were having so many sibling issues. My daughter was being so unkind to my little one. And what I found is that the things that I was doing that I thought were helping or were supposed to help, like calling my older one out and saying, you can't talk to your sister like that. You can't hit her. Like she, she didn't do anything to you. Like, what are you doing? Actually created more rivalry. Right. And what diffused the sibling rivalry in our house was to come with neutrality and to really come into situations without thinking that there was a victim and a villain, but that there were just two people that were having a hard time. And how could I let them both feel seen and heard and understood without picking sides? Because when you pick sides is when you really pit them against each other. So my course, The Sibling Rivalry, it's called Siblings, Not Rivals, <laughs> is all about how do you be the neutral guide and help your kids learn to communicate with one another as opposed to pitting them against one another. So good. I could have used that one too. <laughs> so, so good. All right. Well, listeners, find Michelle. She's amazing. She's awesome. She's thank changed you. my life. And Michelle, Aww. thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're getting off a big, long vacation. And I'm so glad that you came thank and you. were here with us today. So thank you, Lisa. And I hope to have you back again. It's always I'd love fun to. to connect with you. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Michelle. Take care. Thank you.